Today we are going to take a closer look at what I call the hardest working Knight Rider car in the fleet. This one. For those of you who watched our episode commentaries, you'll recognize this car as the hardtop stunt car. For most of the series run, it was the only hardtop car the show had. In fact, it wasn't until near the end of the third season that another hardtop kit would join this one. So you're probably thinking, so what? Big deal, right? What's the importance of this supposed throwaway stunt car? Well, besides the fact that once it debuted, it was used in nearly every episode until the end of the series, we also believe that it was not one of the cars on the infamous train derailment in late 1982. Now, if you aren't familiar with the train derailment, hang on, we'll catch you up in just a little bit. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this particular kit car is this. We know that five Trans Ams used for shooting Knight Rider have survived to this day. If there's a sixth one out there, it's this one. Stay tuned, we'll explain why right after these messages. We've got a new feature across the Knight Rider Historian's YouTube channel, Super Thanks, not to be confused with Super Pursuit. With Super Thanks, you have the option to post a distinct, colorful, and fully customizable comment in our video's comments section. This shows the world that you are a super Knight Rider fan and will stand out amongst the sea of comments that we receive. Go ahead, give it a try. And every Super Thanks gets a super response from us. Press the thanks button. Just don't press the turbo boost. January 1983. Knight Rider had been filming for six months at this point, and the production was beginning to prep to shoot the episode Chariot of Gold. With 15 episodes in the can, the Trans Ams that the show had at this point, five of them, were really beginning to show signs of wear from all the stunts performed with them up to this point. When series creator Glenn A. Larson fulfilled his contract with Universal for the first 13 episodes of the show, Robert Foster was brought in as executive producer and showrunner. One of the first things that Foster did was to try and secure a couple more Trans Ams for the show. Now, he managed to get one TA a few episodes prior for Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death, and that is the car that would eventually become the Season 3 and 4 hero car, which we've discussed in the past. But he still needed more more Trans Ams. Of course, he had no knowledge at this point of the now infamous train derailment in November of 1982 that would see an influx of a dozen Firebirds and Trans Ams be given to the show. Even though that accident happened in November of 82, it would still be a few months before the decision was made to give those cars to the show, to have them converted into kit, and be ready for filming. By the time Chariot of Gold began filming on January 14, 1983, Foster had secured another TA, a 1982 hardtop Trans Am. Now, we know it was an 82 and not an 83 like all the train wreck cars, thanks to some behind-the-scenes photos showing a 1982-only non-overdrive shifter plate, as well as the 1982-only emergency brake handle. So what else do we know about this particular car? Well, unfortunately not a ton, but we are able to glean a few details from watching the show. Now we know it was a Trans Am or a Firebird SE and not a base Firebird because of the dual resonator exhaust that we can see on the car in the episodes it's in. The base Firebird is the only car you couldn't get that dual resonator exhaust with. Still, it has the rear stone guards which we are assuming were not added by the production crew to mimic a Trans Am. So we're calling this car a true 1982 TA from the factory. Now it's possible the car was white from the factory thanks to this other shot we have showing an interior panel removed and it looks like it's white down there but in reality it could possibly be primer from you know junkyard dog or um, one of those other episodes where we see kit in a different color 
And we think it also had a factory tan interior because of the seatbelts we see in its early appearance. Since Kit doesn't normally have seatbelts, we're assuming the crew just hadn't removed these yet and that they were tanned from the factory. Now, obviously, the car had no T-tops, but it did have a rear defrost, and it may have also had a rear wiper, as evidenced by the trim panel we see on the car in Brothers Keeper in Season 2. But again, parts were heavily swapped between cars, so this could just be a trim piece from another car. It had cruise control, no power mirrors, but it did have power locks and power windows. It also had a cargo shade and the deluxe carpet interior panels, again, assuming they weren't swapped in from another car. As we stated earlier, the car would go on to appear in almost every episode after its debut in Chariot of Gold. The only episodes it does not appear in after Chariot are, in production order, Kit the Cat from Season 2, Dead of Night from Season 3, and Night Flight to Freedom and Voodoo Night from Season 4. We also know that, at least from Season 2 onwards, it was always the exact same Trans Am, meaning it was never replaced with another TA of similar options. But we, we actually believe it was the same car from the very, very start in Chariot of Gold. But if you remember the episode in Season 2 Custom Kit, where Kit is decked out with flames, spoilers, and side pipes, well, to mount those side pipes, the crew had to weld a mounting bracket to the car's unibody. From this episode on, every time we see this hardtop stunt car, that funny little mounting bracket is visible, confirming it's the same car through and through. As the episodes and seasons progressed, the hardtop stunt car was bashed and crashed, always patched up and back out to film the next day. Although conspicuously absent from the final produced episode, Voodoo Night, we know the car survived thanks to a handful of tourists riding the Universal Studios trams in the late 1980s. You see, when the show ended, most of the Knight Rider cars languished in a Universal Studios parking lot, having pieces stolen, being exposed to the elements, and just generally being neglected. Can you imagine? By early 1987, most, but not all, of the kit cars in that parking lot had a date with the wrecking ball. But one specific car was noticeably absent from that wrecking ball day. While the other kit cars were rotting away in that parking lot before the wrecking ball, this one, this hardtop stunt car, was kept in a separate parking lot near the transportation department, and it always looked maintained and even appeared in different parking spots in the same parking lot, indicating that it was being used for something. Many of you have inquired as to whether this is really our hardtop stunt car, the one you might have seen on Jay Leno's garage years later, and not the one used throughout the series. It is most definitely not our car, and most definitely is the hardtop stunt car that we're focusing on in this video. Besides the Trans Am Rear Stone Guards, which our hardtop stunt car never had, this car also has that custom kit mounting tab and the squared off overhead console. But here's where things really get interesting. The infamous Wrecking Ball Day, where most of the kit cars were destroyed, happened, we believe, in early 1987. This hardtop stunt car was spotted in this other parking lot near the transportation department throughout 1987 and into 1988 even. So here's a tram video filmed on October 13th, 1987, that clearly shows the hardtop stunt car still in that parking lot after, months after, the wrecking ball event happened. However, in this tram video from 1989, we can see the car is gone. In fact, this is our last known picture of the hardtop stunt car, taken in June of 1988 before it seemingly vanished. Now, in the past, we've talked to our contacts at Universal, who were around at that time. But with the decades passing since that time, no one has any recollection what happened to this car. Maybe you have some information on the fate and or whereabouts of this hardest working Knight Rider car in the fleet. Or maybe you rode the tram in 1987, 1988, or early 1989 and took a picture of this car. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at nightriderhistorians at gmail.com. Now, if we start getting messages from people claiming to have this car and they'll sell it to us for a million bucks, just know there are details that we didn't reveal about this car that will unquestionably authenticate it in our eyes. Things that only we know and that the owner would know. Just putting that out there. Since creating our Knight Rider Historians YouTube channel two years ago, we've connected with people involved with the show and even acquired some props, like an original scanner bar. Can we find this long lost kit too? Hey, 
you never know. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Share the video with your friends. They'll enjoy it. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.